Roman government to stiffen the penalty precisely in Israel and to erect a notice regarding it specifically in Nazareth. It well could be a response to the commotion caused by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. A whole government changed their policy with regards to grave robbery. Archaeology points to the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You've got to deal with the tomb that was empty. You've got to deal with the seal on the tomb. You've got to deal with the large stone that was moved. Remember our theory? The women did it. They Taibo quando them guys out, and they, the women came, and they rolled a two-tone stone away from, stone away from the graves. Not many women can do that. <laughs> Fourth, you've got to take into consideration the fact that the Roman guards went AWOL. Listen, they abandoned their posts. They ran into the city, and they said, whoa, something happened here. The stone is rolled away. There's like this angel guy sitting on it, and he's saying that Jesus is risen. Roman soldiers never abandoned their post. Rome conquered the nations not because they were compassionate with their soldiers. If you're a Roman soldier and you break guard, you abandon your post, you disobey commands, you are instantly burned alive. That's it. That's the punishment. What's the, that's the punishment. What could make these Roman soldiers abandon their post other than something radical took place? We read that they, were, that they were bribed and they were offered protection. You've got to deal with the historical fact of the grave clothes. That when the people went into the tomb and looked for the body, the body was not there, but the grave clothes still laid there. If someone stole the body, how did they slide Jesus out of the little mummy bag and leave it looking undisturbed? Come on. You've got to deal with the fact of his confirmed appearances. If you were to take every one of those 500 witnesses and put them on the witness stand for just six minutes in a court of law, it would be 50 hours of eyewitness testimony. You little law students, you go in and investigate the books. What other trial has 50 hours of eyewitness testimony and anyone doubts it? None, I would suggest. You've got to deal with the fact that there were no eyewitnesses to the body. Just show me the body. If Jesus never rose from the dead, just produce the body. Not now, it's 2,000 years. 2,000 years ago, just produce the body. You've got to deal with the fact that within history, it is completely silent. There is no one in history who says, I saw the dead body. You've got to deal with the 11 changed lives that the disciples went from cowards to heroes who preached the word of God and died for their belief in a risen Jesus Christ. You've got to deal with 8,000 people getting converted in one week upon the fact being forwarded to them that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. How do you explain that if he was still in the grave? They all could have walked there and saw it. You've got to deal with the fact of the existence of Christianity today. Jesus never rose from the dead. There would not be Christianity today. It is taken by fact of the resurrection out of the philosophical debate and put into the historical fact category. And that is why we have the historical Christian faith today. You've got to look at these facts. And I'll tell you what. You get a book on the resurrection, we just scratch the surface. I, uh, surface. I almost feel dumb. I almost feel lame. I almost feel like a bad shepherd, a bad Bible teacher, because I haven't given you anything. Just the tiniest little smidgen of the historical evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I've just tried to whet your appetite tonight that you might dig into it for yourself, but that you would be encouraged that you can defend on your campuses, with your families, in the workplace, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Don't engage in these philosophical arguments. You just tell them, well, what about the fact that Jesus rose from the dead? And then you give them a few of these points. And you know what happens every time? Uh, well, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, well, my professor said that um, uh, I uh, oh, rose from the dead. Well, he's, um, uh. How do you argue with that? Rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is alive. 
If you're a Christian, it ought to make your soul sing that your Savior is alive. If you're not a Christian, you now have to choose whether you're going to follow Jesus Christ or not. Think of this illustration, though. You're lost in the woods. You come to a fork in the road. At the head of one fork is a dead man laying there. And a little sign that says, go this way. This leads to where you want to go. And at the other fork, there is an alive man. And he says, I'll show you the way. Which way are you going to go? Thanks for joining us here at Reality. Have a question or comment? Or if you'd like a copy of today's study, give us a call at 866-999-5983. Once again, that's 866-999-5983. You can contact us via email at realityradio at kwave.com or you can write us at Reality, 3000 West MacArthur Boulevard, Suite 500, Santa Ana, California, 92704. For more information or if you would like to visit Reality in Carpinteria, log on to JesusIsReality.com. Once again, that's JesusIsReality.com. And make sure you join us again next time as we fellowship, worship, and study in God's Word, right here on Reality. This is Reality. This is what set me free, Jesus.